Esperanza Rising, pages 100 through 106. Las cebolas. Onions. We're here, said Isabel, as the truck turned into camp and slowed to a crawl. Esperanza stood up and looked over the cab. They were in a large clearing, surrounded by great fields. Row upon row of white wooden cabins formed long lines, connected like bunkhouses. Each cabin had one small window and two wooden steps that led to the door. She couldn't help but think that they weren't even as nice as the servants' cabins in Aguas Calientes. They reminded Esperanza more of the horse stalls of, on the ranch than of a place for people to live. A big mountain loomed in the east, framing one side of the valley. Marta jumped out and ran towards some girls standing together near the cabins. Esperanza could hear them talking in English, the words hard and clipped, as if they were speaking with sticks in their mouths. They all looked at her and laughed. She turned away, thinking that if Isabel could learn English, then maybe someday she could learn it too. A line of flatbed trucks pulled into a clearing and Campesinos hopped down, home from the fields. People called to one another. Children ran to their fathers yelling, Papi, Papi! Esperanza felt a deep pang. She watched and wondered how she would fit into this world. Isabel pointed to a wooden building off to the side. That's where they have all the toilets. Esperanza cringed as she tried to imagine having no privacy. We're lucky, said Isabel solemnly. In some camps, we had to go in ditches. Esperanza looked down at her, swallowed, and nodded, suddenly thankful for something. A foreman came over and shook hands with Juan and Alfonso and pointed to the cabin in front of the truck. The women got out, took the babies, and helped Miguel with the bags. Mama and Esperanza walked into the cabin. It had two small rooms. One half of the front room was the kitchen with a stove, sink, and a counter, and a table and chairs. A pile of wood waited near the stove. Across the room was a mattress on the floor. The back room had another mattress, big enough for two people, and a tiny cot. In between sat a wood fruit gate, to be used as a night table, its sides touching each bed. Above was another small window. Mama looked around and then gave Esperanza a weak smile. Is this our cabin or Hortensia's and Alfonso's? Asked Esperanza, hoping that hers and Mama's might be better. We're all together in this cabin, said Mama. Mama, we can't possibly all fit. Esperanza, they will only give one cabin for each man with a family. There is no housing for single women. This is a family camp, so we must have a male head of household to live and work here. And that is Alfonso. Mama sank to the bed. Her voice sounded tired. He has told them we are his cousins, and if anyone asks, we must say it's true. Otherwise, we cannot stay. We are next door to Juan and Josefina, so we can adjust the sleeping arrangements. Miguel will sleep next door with them and the babies, and Isabel will sleep here with Alfonso, Hortensia, and us. Miguel came in and set down their valises, then left. Esperanza could hear Alfonso and Hortensia in the next room, talking about the camp office. Mama got up to unpack and began to sing. Esperanza felt anger crawling up her throat. Mama, we are living like horses. How can you sing? How can you be happy? We don't even have a room to call our own. The talking suddenly stopped in the other room. Mama gave Esperanza a long, hard look. She calmly walked over and shut the door to the small room. Sit down, she said. Esperanza sat on the tiny cot, its springs screeching. Mama sat on the bed opposite her, their knees almost touching. Esperanza, if we had stayed in Mexico and I had married Tio Luis, we would have had one choice to be apart and miserable. Here we have two choices, to be together and miserable, or to be together and happy. Mija, we have each other and Abuelita will come. How would she want you to behave? I choose to be happy. So which will you choose? She knew what Mama wanted to hear. Happy, she said quietly. Do you know how lucky we are, Esperanza? Many people come to this valley and wait months for a job. Juan went to a lot of a trouble to make sure we had this cabin waiting for us when we got here. Please be grateful for the favors bestowed upon us. 
Mama bent over and kissed her, then left the room. Esperanza laid down on the cot. A few minutes later, Isabel came in and sat on the bed. Will you tell me what it was like to be so very rich? She looked at Isabel, her eyes anticipating some wonderful story. Esperanza was quiet for a moment, clinging to one possible thought. Then she said, I still, I am still rich, Isabel. We will only be here until Abuelita is well enough to travel. Then she will come with her money and we will buy a big house. A house that Papa would be, have been proud of us for living in. Maybe we will buy two houses so that Hortensia, Alfonso, and Miguel can live in one and work for us again. And you can visit us, Isabel. You see, this is only temporary. We will not be here for long. De veras, asked Isabel. Yes, it is the truth, said Esperanza, staring at the ceiling that someone had covered with newspaper and cardboard. My papa would have never wanted us to live in a place like this. She closed her eyes and heard Isabel tiptoe out of the room and shut the door. The weariness from the days of travel flooded over her, and her mind wandered from people peeing in ditches to Marta's rudeness to the horse stalls at El Rancho de las Rosas. How could she be happy or grateful when she had never been more miserable in her life?